Hey everybody, DeMarcus Strange with Insurica here. And as you all know, I enjoy bringing you information that you guys can find useful in your risk programs and help your organizations out to perform better. Uh, today, I thought we'd do something a little different. Got my good friend here, Jeff McKissick, and just wanted to briefly sit down with him and discuss some, some talking points that you all might find a little bit interesting and may want to put to use inside your risk program at your businesses and organizations. So I'm gonna just kind of jump right off into it. We're not gonna give Jeff any time to uh, get ready, so to speak. So Jeff, here, here's a question that I sometimes hear often, just wanna get your professional um, point of view on it. Are there any gaps that you find common that businesses have in their safety and security protocols? Yes, and it all boils down to one basic area, training. And what I mean by that is most companies have done the heavy lifting already. Mm -hmm. They've invested in their cameras, their alarms, their access control, maybe even private security guards that watch the premise. They've invested in their firewalls, antivirus, all the things on the data side, but they've forgotten people. And the people are always the weakest link. It's your people that are uneducated, untrained, that bring dramas on site. It's your people that don't tell you something that you need to know may be brewing on the sidelines. It's your people that click on the wrong things, download the wrong, wrong things, put USB drives in. It's always people. So while 70 to 80% of most of the heavy lifting is done, is that 20 to 30% that still continually land companies in the courtroom or the newsroom because they didn't address the aspect of training. Okay, it's interesting you say that. You know, with me having a safety background, I always say if you're doing safety, you're in the business of people. So that's an interesting take on yeah. that. Mm -hmm. In addition to the people within organizations, what would you say are some major points of liabilities that face companies today? They basically boil down, at least in my perspective, three basic areas, physical risk, data risk, and reputational risk. So to break those down even further, physical risk, something a lot of people don't think of is according to OSHA, you are responsible for the safety of your people wherever their business leads them. So if you're sending a W-2 employee in the field, you're responsible for their safety and security in the field as well as in the office. Likewise, if you have people that are coming in out of your place of business, the property itself, I can tell you a $27 million lawsuit that was lost because something happened in a parking lot, not inside the building. It wasn't even with employees. It was with patrons that were in the parking lot. So there was a liability. When it comes to data type situations, there again, it's those people that come into play and things that people don't think of as far as compromise from the inside. In other words, you think of someone hacking your computers, I'm thinking of someone hacking your people, impersonation, bribery, even blackmail that can be used to cull that sensitive data from the inside out. And then with reputational risk, oh God, we see this all the time. Now, I just saw a case here in Dallas this week where your employees do something Thing controversial, if not scandal based on the outside, God forbid they themselves post it on TikTok or YouTube, and now it goes viral, or somebody captures one of your people doing something, and they put it on TikTok or they put it on YouTube, and now you have your company owner or public relations team or firm having to answer for an individual's actions because now it reflects upon the entire company. Again, all three of these boil down to people but in those areas of physical, data, and reputational risk. All three, the weakest link is still the people. Interesting. Um, so if I'm hearing you correctly, we don't want to be in a position to where we're looking through or, or in a better way of saying it, it's just getting tunnel vision. Right. We want to be able to say, okay, the people are uh, posing a risk to my organization, but it could be physical. Yep. It could be with the data that we're dealing with. Mm -hmm. It can even be where they are working at. Yeah. The environment that they're in. So often when I sit down with a company and do any kind of initial consulting with them, I have two key questions I ask, and you've heard me allude to this before. Number one, what do we have here that other people want? Mm -hmm. The reason that's so important is it tells you where you need to deploy various technological assets. If you know what it is, is it money? Is it data? What is it? Is it property? Is it intellectual property? What do we have here that other people want? Now you better learn how to deploy those assets like cameras, alarms, access control, security guards, et cetera. The second question, much akin to the first, who do we have here that other people might seek to harm? I dealt with several law firms last year before Christmas that were facing potential retaliation. 
either the law firm won the case and now opposing counsel's client was mad at them and showing up at their place of business. They lost the case, their client was mad at them. Or in one case of a law firm, they had a situation outside where they were defending someone that the community didn't appreciate and they were getting anonymous threats from the community. And that's just in one example. The medical can tell you about this. The procedure didn't go well. The surgery didn't go well. Now the doctors or staff are being threatened on the outside. So who do you have at your place of business that other people might seek to harm? Also knowing that domestic violence in the workplace is now one of the leading, if not the leading cause of workplace violence. And these are things that most companies don't even know about unless you have your ear to the ground to pick up on some of the office gossip that's going around. But there again, it's what you don't know that can hurt you. And that's what we have to come back and again, addressing the, the human aspect of this. This is where risk management has to be lockstep with HR management and even reputation management. That's where you get a comprehensive and proactive initiative. That's an interesting take. I, I really appreciate how you put that together as you were speaking. To me, when it hit my ears, it's like, man, this is all, it's almost like a recipe. Yeah. And, and, and to go along with it, it's either you're going to create a recipe for disaster <laughs> by not being or adhering to those things, yeah. or you're going to set yourself up for success and create a recipe that protects your organization. And you know what makes the best recipes? What's that? They're in writing. Mm. In other words, documentation and paper trail. If it doesn't exist, it doesn't stand up in court. Every good recipe is written down. Every good security protocol, every good risk management protocol is written down. It's in manuals, it's in employee handbooks, it's signed off on, it's known throughout the company. So God forbid you end up in the court of law or court of public opinion, you've got a legal and moral leg to stand on because it was in writing. So I appreciate the recipe illusion because just like a recipe, you need it in writing. Yep, I'll send you a bill for that. And to go along with that, to me, when I hear that, it gives you something to pass along to your, uh, or throughout your organization. Right. As people come and go, um, you still have this recipe or, i.e., this framework yep. that you're working from that you can either uh, adjust to make better, you can go in, fine-tune it, and you have something that's set in stone that you always have to work with. Well, you've got to factor that. in the turnover. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up mm -hmm. because you've got to factor in. It's like background checks. Yes, you should do them, but how often do you do them? Because mm. that can be used against you in court as well. Oh, you only did it the day you hired them? And that yet when we check back and this employee did so-and-so, we found all this in their criminal history from eight years ago when you hired them, but this just happened the last three or four years, but they had this case and this case and this case. But because you never did the repeat background checks due to turnover, now that something's caught you off guard. Yeah, that's an interesting point. I often talk about that when I go and speak to uh, clients about negligent entrustment. It's like, hey, if you're if you're running an MVR on an employee and you're only doing it once, you may not be doing all that you need to do for protection of your organization. Bingo. In your own words, how would you say documentation factors into a risk management portfolio? Well, there, there again, this is where risk management and HR man, and management need to be on the same page because risk management may set the pace. In other words, these are things we need to address. Well, let's reverse engineer this. Now let's get with general counsel or our outside attorney law firm of, of record and start to wordsmith this. But then it becomes a situation where it goes to HR, assuming the company's large enough to have HR, where this is now indoctrinated into the employee handbook mm -hmm. the employees have to sign off on and or policy procedures, the employee training manual that goes into the actual onboarding of employees or that periodic turnover happens. But this is where, again, we have to have risk management, HR management. I know you may be on different sides of the hallway, but this one time you need to meet in the middle because both entities have to be on that same page. And likewise, if you do happen to have someone in public relations, even companies now are starting because of reputation management, starting to incorporate things in employee handbooks and others based on social media protocol, mm. whether on the clock or off the clock, and what employees are allowed to and not allowed to post about the company, about clients, about cases, about records, whatever the case may be. There are protocols from major companies now coming into place. So even if you have a situation where you have interior or exterior public relations involved, again, reputation management, so it could be PR, HR, and risk management, all of them coming together, everybody being on that same page. And, and you know, Jeff, really to add to what you're saying, it's like I commonly say good risk management 
is interaction with the different departments. So it would behoove these organizations to get HR involved or whoever's in the process of creating these documents. Is that something you would agree with? Oh, absolutely. 100%. There again, if you are of a sizable company that have HR, risk management, PR, those three departments should be being on a quasi-regular basis just to make sure everything is coming together. But even if not, you have a situation, maybe it's the CFO who's operating as the risk manager and a de facto kind of role, but you have HR. Okay, the CFO and the HR director need to be meeting together to make sure that these things are being addressed and they're being addressed in writing. Okay. All right. So we got one more final question for you. You know you can't give us everything all at one time, and we oh. want the people to come seek you out and get this good information. So last question for you. What are your final thoughts that if you could tell organizations out there one thing, one nugget you want them to leave with, what would that be? Do not expect what you do not inspect. It's a great saying. Well, and I didn't coin it. It's been out there for a while. It's an old sale, saying in sales and management, but needs to be in risk management, HR management as well. Don't expect, do not assume that your people know better. Oh, Lord, the number of times I've sat down with a C-suite or management, oh, but our people know better than to fill in the blank. Mm -hmm. And then months later, you found out they didn't know better because no one told them any better. No one showed them any better. So do not expect what you do not inspect. It all has to boil down to that paper trail and making sure, not assuming, but making sure that people know what you think they know. All right, so we want to thank our guest, Mr. Jeff McKissick, for jumping in and giving us all this wonderful knowledge. Uh, if you have any more questions, feel free to reach out to him at Defense by Design. Uh, Jeff, again, is a good friend of mine. He's a great risk expert. Uh, you can ask around in the community. Uh, you won't find anybody has one bad thing to say about him. Thank you all for joining us.